Thank you for attending the External Joint Test Training Program for Single Offset Joint Designs in Concrete Pipe and Box Sections. This module will provide you with the basic knowledge you need in conducting this test. Now let's begin. First, we will be covering the purpose of an external joint test. We will then talk about which ASTM standards are the ones meant to be referenced for external joint tests. Next, we will talk about the equipment that will be required to complete this testing. We will provide you all of the necessary information that you will need in order to prepare for the external joint testing, as well as some tips. Then we will delve into how this testing is conducted. Finally, we will go over any additional resources. Now we will cover the purpose of an external joint test. An external test is based on the design concept of creating a pressurized pocket between the primary or normal joint gasket and a secondary gasket, which seals the outer gap between the face of the bell and the spigot. ASTM C433, C1677, C497, and C1628 all provide information regarding the requirements and the proper procedure for testing of joints. We will only have time to touch on these specifications during this program. It is important that this training program should not be substituted for thoroughly reading and understanding the ASTM specifications themselves. Please review the specifications prior to your testing. If not already included with the drawings, a copy of this spec can be obtained from the ASTM website. It is important to have the proper equipment when partaking in any testing. Please ensure to have this equipment for a successful external joint test. One, primary sealing gasket for joint to be tested. One, secondary gasket for joint to be tested and lubricant. Two, six inch long steel nipple. At least one end of each tube threaded one eighth of an inch to three eighths of an inch NPT. Two, one eighth of an inch to three eighths of an inch NPT dash F shut off ball valves. One eighth of an inch to three eighths of an inch NPT dash F T. One one eighth of an inch to three eighths of an inch NPT dash M zero to 30 PSIG pressure gauge. Close pipe nipples and adapter as needed to make connections. Quick drying two-part epoxy. Example, JB Weld. One tube and roll of PTFE threaded sealant and tape. And restraining equipment, threaded rods and timbers or I-beams. This is an example of a typical restraining fixture utilizing steel channel retaining beams and high tensile strength threaded retaining rods. Use one inch diameter rods with washer and nuts. Rods should be about 20 feet long with 18 inch to 24 inch of threads on each end. If using six inch by six inch timbers for restraint, you will need at least two washers, one very large and thick and a smaller one for each nut and place larger one next to wood. Washers will otherwise eat into wood and pressure will slowly drop because of that creep. Use of metal I-beams in lieu of timbers is more expensive but eliminates concern about creep at washers. Step one, determine drilling locations. Please note that the preparation steps should be done at least a few hours before the testing begins. In order to perform the test, hydrostatic pressure will need to be introduced into and air exhausted out of the pressure pocket. Consequently, two access holes will need to be drilled through the wall of the bell into the space between the two gaskets. Obtain recommended drilling locations from the gasket supplier. In most cases, position outside edge of drill hole at the inside edge of the bell bevel. 
One hole should be at horizontal center line and one at top elevation of pipe and box. Be sure to ensure that locations of your drilling holes will also avoid your rebar cage. Mark locations on the inside of the bell for drilling, the inlet port on one side and the exhaust port on the top, where these holes will fall so that they are between the primary and secondary gaskets. See images on slide for a visual representation of where the access hole is meant to be between the primary and secondary gaskets. It is imperative that the exhaust port be located at the highest vertical point to allow the full and complete release of all entrapped air. Consequently, it is recommended that testing be performed with test pieces and sections installed horizontally. Typically, the exhaust port is connected to a 1 8 of an inch to 3 8 of an inch NPT dash F threaded T, with one side of the T going to a shutoff ball valve and the other side of the T going to a pressure gauge, 0 to 30 PSIG. The inlet hole placement is optional, but if the pressure gauge is to be connected to this point in lieu of the outlet hole, then in accordance with established practices, it should be located no lower than the horizontal center line of the joint. Note, with larger diameter pipe and box culverts, the pressurization of the joint will result in thrust forces being generated. A half inch annular space on an eight feet by four feet box section or 96 inch pipe will generate close to 2000 pound of thrust at 13 PSIG test pressure. So a suitable restraining method must be utilized to hold the sections being tested together. Failure to do so will not only jeopardize the safety of test personnel, but the chance of a slight movement of the joint would significantly increase. Step two, drill the locations. Now it is time to drill the holes. In the last step, we marked locations of the holes in which we will be drilling. Drill through these markings from the inside through the bell for both ports. Reduce speed of drill when close to full penetration to avoid spalling concrete. A hole size sufficient to allow the epoxying in of a steel nipple with a 1 8 of an inch to 3 8 of an inch NPT-M size with a threaded end is required. The available space between the two gaskets, including the roll of the pre-lube gasket tube, determines the nipple size so the opening inside the joint will not be blocked by one of the gaskets. Usually for pipe joints, a 1 8 of an inch works best. And that means that a 1 8 of an inch to 1 quarter of an inch adapter will be necessary since the gauge, ball valves, etc., will likely have 1 quarter of an inch connections. Step 3. Install steel pipes into drilled holes. Next, the end going into the drilled hole of each nipple should be duct taped to avoid adhesive getting inside of them. A two-part epoxy sealant, JB Weld is a good one, is thoroughly mixed and applied into the hole on the outside of each of the nipples before they are pushed most of the way through the bell, just short of the inside surface of the bell. Also, be sure to hold the nipple in place until epoxy is hard enough that nipple won't move. Stop the nipple flush or 1 16th of an inch short of flush on inside surface. Additional epoxy is then applied around each nipple to ensure you get a good seal between the nipple and the concrete. Allow epoxy to set as per manufacturer's instructions. After epoxy sets, punch hole in duct tape using welded rod or something similar and remove tape that is dangling. Step four, install gaskets on box or pipe. 
The secondary gasket is installed on the spigot section of the applicable box or pipe section. Once the two box or pipe sections are homed, this gasket will contain water within the joint. Note that you must equalize the tension on the gaskets. If this is not done, you may not have the same amount of rubber material all around the joint, which means the gasket may not seal properly. Make sure the gasket is pushed against the shoulder of the joint as much as possible. This gasket should be installed with the stripe on the gasket facing the end of the spigot, or in other words, with the stripe facing the installer. This gasket will also need to be lubricated. Please see SOCL installation instructions on the Hamilton Kent website or by clicking on the link in the section of the training program. If installing secondary gasket on a box culvert, an acceptable adhesive is then used to ensure that the gasket sits where it should on the spigot. Please refer to Hamilton Kent literature, which can be found at the Hamilton Kent website and also attached in this section of the training program for information on how adhesive should be installed on the box. Please note that along the bottom section of the joint, the gasket is likely to sag away from the spigot if it is not held in place until the adhesive dries. It is recommended to secure it with a long flat board and a couple of large clamps. Once the glue has set on the box secondary gasket, the primary gasket, which is usually a Tylox Super Seal gasket, is installed on the spigot. The gasket is oriented with the rolling tube facing out towards the end of the spigot and the nose of the gasket firmly against the step of the joint. Installation instructions for proper installation of a Tylox Super Seal gasket can be found on the Hamilton Kent website or by clicking on the link in this learning segment of the training program. Please note that adhesive will also have to be used on the bottom of the primary gasket, as it will also sag. Step five, home sections together. Now that the gaskets are secure to the spigot, it is time to move onto the next stage of the preparation. The secondary gasket receives a thorough application of lube, which helps the sections to home as completely as possible. The gasketed spigot is brought together closely with the other section carefully and smoothly. If you are performing deflection testing, something needs to be placed in the joint on one side, like a piece of rebar or wood, to keep it open a half of an inch more than the other side once homed. The sections are then homed using come-alongs or forklifts. Please refer to ASTM documentation for proper homing techniques. A tip that we can provide, which will make it much easier to home any boxes for a box culvert installation, is to place the box spigot end on multiple pieces of solid steel bars. This will make it much easier to bring the box sections together. It is important to note that you have to ensure that the box bell end is at the proper height so that you are homing the boxes at straight alignment. Step six, install valves and gauge onto nipples. The exhaust valve and gauge are installed on the top nipple and tightened completely. Plastic tubing can be attached to the valve to divert the water that comes out of the exhaust port away from the box and joint to prevent the incorrect assumption of a leak. Fasten inlet hose to inlet ball valve. Step seven. Allow water to enter joint assembly. With both ball valves open, 
Allow water to slowly enter the joint assembly until the water is seen to flow steadily out of the exhaust hose. Then close the outlet ball valve after air is exhausted. Testing. When the water flow out of the exhaust port becomes very steady, turn off that valve. This will allow for pressurizing of the joint. Once the gauge has reached the desired PSIG, you should shut off the inlet valve as well and check to ensure the pressure does not drop. For a deflected joint test, where the joint is deflected or opened, the secondary gasket may need to be wedged, pushed towards, and restrained against the belt. One form of restraint is to insert a piece of heavy outdoor extension cord which contains a lot of copper or some type of metal. A successful test will have no leakage from the primary gasket. You could experience some leakage from the secondary gasket, particularly when the joint is deflected. But this is acceptable provided you are able to maintain the pressure within the joint and find no leakage from the primary gasket. A successful test will have no leakage from the primary gasket. You could experience some leakage from the secondary gasket, particularly when the joint is deflected, but this is acceptable provided you are able to maintain the pressure within the joint and find no leakage from the primary gasket. The American Concrete Pipe Association also provides technical resources for production and installation best practices. Please refer to these technical resources along with this training program for future guidance. Their website is www.concretepipe.org. Once you close this video, there will be a link connecting you to this website found in the written section of this module of the training program. Thank you for attending the external joint test for single offset joint designs in concrete pipe and box sections training program. You should now be prepared to complete your first external joint test. Be sure to contact Hamilton Kent if you have any questions or concerns about the testing techniques discussed in this training.